And we've got our collected pond water. We have four jars, all pretty well full. I'm going to pull any extra garbage that I can out of it. Okay, but it looks actually pretty good from the outside. And then you want to label a jar. You want to label it hay. And then another one, rice. And a third jar, egg yolk. I'll just put egg. And then the last one, soil. So before you actually put anything in it, you want to label the jars. That way you don't get confused. So here's the hay. And the rice. And I'll put the egg on this because this has a little dirt in it, so that that could be our soil mm. jar. How's that? There you go. Yeah, we'll put a little extra dirt in it, but that shouldn't hurt anything. All right, all right. Then we've got a teaspoon, and so the first thing I'm going to do, okay, you needed uncooked white rice. Uh, brown rice, they say, won't work as well, and that's fine. So this is uncooked. This is right out of my my bag of rice at home. So one teaspoon of uncooked white rice, I'm going to put it in the white rice jar. Okay, I'm going to wipe off my spoon. There we go. And then I've got some egg yolk. I had a boiled egg and I've got some nice egg yolk. And what I want to do is you want to mash it up or cut it up in a way that you can get more of the protist can get to more of the area. So egg yolk breaks up very nicely. And then we'll take a teaspoon of that, about that much, okay, and we will put it in the jar with the egg. And that will settle down to the bottom. And then, uh, before I left the pond, I got some of the dirt around the edge of the pond. And I can take this off. And there's a little bit of grass. I'm going to ignore that. Okay. And there may be a few rocks. That's okay. Okay, as long as there's some dirt, about a teaspoon of soil, and drop that in there, and it'll get cloudy, but eventually it will settle, and I see there's a little bit of something floating, which I'm just going to go ahead and take out. There we go. All right, and then lastly, they want us to do some hay, and I'm going to do the hay the same way that I did the egg yolk. I've got some hay that was out of the bottom of a barn, and I'm going to cut it up. Again, you want to give the protus extra surface area to feed off, because this is going to be a feed source. Now, I want you to be thinking, this is going to take about three to five days to develop, and I want you to be thinking what type of protus would be interested in each of these food sources, because that's the type of protus that you're going to be finding in the jars. For example, the hay. Hay is a plant, but you also have a lot of uh, uh, organisms on it, like bacteria and stuff. Right? Are there are there protists that will eat this material? The answer is yes. Okay, you have some that will feed on the cellulose part, and they actually have the means to break it down. So here we go. I've got a teaspoon of hay. Pull out some of the longer bits. There we go. One teaspoon of hay, and we drop it in there. Now, yes, it'll float for now, but after a while, once it gets waterlogged, it'll sink down towards the bottom. And anyway, if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because this produce can swim and they'll be able to go from place to place. All right, egg. Egg is an animal uh, product. It's protein, and so you would expect your animal-like protists to do that. Soil. Soil. What does soil have going for it? Lots of dead, decayed material. We cover the term saprophyte in our chapter. Saprophyte is an organism that eats dead things. Uh, breaks down dead organic material into the soil. You'd also have saprophytes eating the hay at that rate because the hay is old hay and it's in the process of breaking down. And then the rice, the, the rice is purely a plant product. It'd be very interesting in a few days to find out what types of organisms are growing in this jar. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to put some plastic over. Now, I've got an old grocery sack that I'm going to use and it's amber colored, yellow colored and I do this for a reason because uh, remember these organisms don't really care for a lot of light so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make kind of an oversized cap for them and that's why I have the rings 
Now you say, what about oxygen? Don't they need to breathe? Well, not as much as you or I, okay? They do need oxygen, and all you need to do is take a small skewer or a pin and prick two or three holes in it, and that's really all they need. So notice how I have that car, the jar mostly covered, and that's to protect it from a lot of extra sunlight. And I'm going to do this to the other three jars. So this, this experiment doesn't have to be really expensive, but it is a very, very useful experiment because in the next two weeks, they have two more labs and we are going to be spending our entire time with microscopes doing this. Now, after two weeks, the organisms will start to die just because, you know, they are in a confined space and you will have some things start to go moldy. And here's the thing, as things start to go moldy, you want to see if you can take a pair of tweezers and pull those out, drop my scissors, you want to see if you can pull those out with a pair of tweezers and it'll make your culture last longer. Uh, you can maybe even stretch it into three weeks if you take good care of your cultures. Make sure they do not get below 60 degrees. Because remember, even at the bottom of a pond, it's going to stay warmer when the weather gets cooler. Right now it's so oh, late September, so it's just past the fall equinox. So it hasn't started getting cooler yet, but I predict it'll do so fairly soon. Uh, the night times are getting down to 55 up here in St. Louis, Little Ohio. And so we want to make sure that they stay comfortable and happy. So I have one more jar to cover. And then this is Saturday. Our co-op begins in nine day, uh, five days. It's uh, on a Thursday. And they say between three and five days is the right amount of time to let these cultures sit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Until you are ready to use them. Until that time, I'm going to stick them in my bucket. I'm not going to stick them in a sunshiny window because you don't want the sunshine. Instead, I'm going to stick it in, in a warm area of the family room um, that's going to stay warm for the next five days. I'll see you in five days.